All right, hi there. I'm going to be talking to you today about Max QDA basics and some basic analysis. I'm going to use this PowerPoint so you can sort of skip ahead to the parts that are relevant to you depending on where you're at. All right, so getting started, um, we'll talk about how to open a new project and import documents. So you'll open up your Max QDA um, depending on what version you have. It might be online or it might be through a, um, a USB drive. Uh, I've opened mine up, it's for USB drive. So if you wanna start a new project that has nothing in it, you click on new project, and then it will ask you to direct where you wanna save. It'll open up Max QDA and you'll find somewhere to save your project. It's important that you save it somewhere and you point to that every single time you wanna use it because it's gonna, um, you wanna make sure you're pulling from the most recent version and that you only have one version on your computer. Um, so I'm actually gonna cancel that and open up a project that I've already started. Um, for the purposes of a class. So you'll see here. Um, okay, so I've got one interview in here. So the first thing you want to know how to do is to import documents. So what you're going to do is go to import. Most of the time you're going to be using text, PDFs, or tables. You can import a lot of different things um, like images, audio, videos. I've never done that. So you might need to use the help feature to figure out um, how to code those and how that works. But basically you're going to click on here um, then you'll point to the, um, the document that you want. So I'm gonna go to my COVID project and go to my interview transcriptions and I'll pick a random one to pull in. So these are all pseudonyms, um, by the way. So now I've got Dakota in here. Um, there's no coding in that. So that's the, the, the first step that you need to do, okay? Um, so now you have interviews in there, you can pull in as many as you want, and then you're going to need to code them. Okay, so the next thing I wanna to talk to you about is um, basic coding. So basic coding, uh, when you're just getting started, you'll have no codes, you'll have no code book, and you'll have no um, codes on your, uh, on your, in any of your documents. So let's start with Dakota here. So uh, I've got a few codes already set here. And as you can see, PPE, stress, COVID, patient care, and work. So I'm gonna go through here and I'm just gonna make one up here. I want a new code. There's a couple different ways to do that. One way is to go like this and code with a new code. So then I let's call this code time. Um, I'm gonna pick a color to make the code that way. And then I've got it coded here. So now this code is shown up down here in my codes. Um, another way you can do it if you know all the codes that you wanna do, you can just click on here and put in new codes. So let's say um, uh, fear. And I'm gonna make that this color. So I could just, if I know what codes I wanna get started out with, I could add them all in here. Um, so then you're gonna go through and in order to code, what you'll do is um, say I wanna code, I find a, uh, uh, um, a passage here I want to code and say I want to code that fear or time or um, really any of these things here that I go like that and then I click this button here if it's not a new code. So I'm going to highlight anything I want to. Um, let's say we want to call that patient care. I'll click on patient care over here, come up here and code it. Um, and so if you want to code something partly one thing and partly another thing, say I'm also coding this um, let's see, COVID, you can use a drop down menu. It'll only show you the ones that you've done before. So if you haven't done one before, you'll have to come over here and select it. And then I code that. And then you'll see there's an overlap here between patient care. And COVID. I'm not actually coding these um, the way the way they would necessarily need to be coded just for, for example here. Um, so then the next thing you're gonna wanna do is start to think about like your code book, how you're coding something. So um, you can see I've got a few memos in here. To get a memo on something, you right click and add new memo, and then it will open up for you. If it's if it's already there, then you just double click on the memo. That's for a, a PC left click. I'm not sure how it would work on a Mac. So now I'm gonna wanna start to de define this so that when me or my team is coming back to code it, I wanna know what I mean. So fear of contracting COVID, um, fear of infecting loved ones and other patients, whatever you want that to be. And then you can just close it down. Um, and this should just be a living document. This will be your code book and you'll add to it whenever you make decisions about your code and what you think your code, um, 
what you think your code should be. So I, I did a few other examples here. You can see the code book here when it gives insight into what it's like to have COVID treat or treat COVID specifically. But then maybe I'm coding my document and I realize that I'm making a decision around when to code for COVID and when not to. And I'll put that note in my code book. Um, and then you can explore your code book um, to have all the, the notes in one place or you can just keep that in here. Okay, so um, that's basic how to code and then how to make your code book. Um, and then the next thing we're gonna talk about is sharing. So once you've coded an uh, interview and you wanna share it with your team, um, what you're gonna do is go into Max QBA and you're going to go to um, home and teamwork and then you're gonna export. So say I just wanna export the the Dakota interview, then I'll just click on that. If I want to do both Dakota and Alex, then I'll click on that. Um, I'm to make my square a little bit. Okay, so then I'll go next. Here's where I can choose to select only for some codes. Most of the time, you're probably going to want, meaning all the all the things that I coded with these codes in those documents that I'm exporting. Um, most of the time, you're just going to want to select the whole thing, but maybe there's a time when you just want to select from one or two codes or you want to exclude one or two codes and you can select it that way. Then you'll click next um, and then you'll save this somewhere. So I'm saving to my downloads for now. And then, um, so then that's done. I can close this window. And then to import something that your team has done, you're going to go in here, click import, select file. Um, so for example, in this case, I could, it's going to be an MEX file. I could import that. I'm not going to because I, I already did all, uh, just I already have that in this file, but that's how you would import a document that your team works at. Um, I would say that you have to be really careful and have a really good strategy with your team, how you're gonna save things. Maybe you're coding together and you're all working on the same interview um, and you wanna make sure that you are um, getting the most recent version or the most up-to-date version. And when you import something, if you already have that file in your computer, but you want your teammates version of the coding, um, you can either replace the document, you can save it in a different name so you have both versions, or you can merge the code. So you wanna make some choices about that when you're importing. And uh, there'll be some automatic messages that help you figure out how to do that. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna talk about is basic analysis. Um, so when you're trying to analyze your data, once you've coded it all, um, what, how, how are you gonna do that? What, what are some ways to do that? So uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is switch projects here um, because this one doesn't have very many codes. So I want to project uh, close the key, CMA. Okay, so I'm gonna open my big project which has 75 interviews and 4,000 codes on it. Um, okay, so um, here we are uh, with this, with this, document and I've got, I've read them all, I've coded them all, or maybe my team has, you can see here, here are all the interviews. This tells you the number of codes that there are for each interview um, down this side. And so um, one thing you can do just to start off is say you're really, you know, after reading all your interviews or doing them, you're really interested in, um, let's see, difficult decisions. So then I'm gonna double click on difficult decisions and it's gonna pop up this screen here with every single instance of this and you can see the document name and um, where the where the code begins and ends like the line num number um, and then if you click on it it will show you the the coded segment in this box so you can see these all go down here um, so uh, let's say i want to export those to have them in a in a document so i'm going to double click on that and then i'm going to either export as an excel document as an HTML, or my favorite thing to do is to export it as a Word document. So the things that are selected here are fine with how they are for me, um, but you can add memos or comments and other specialty things. But the basic thing that's selected will, should work for you. Press OK, and it's gonna ask me where to save it. And I'm just gonna save it in the downloads for now. And then it's gonna open up a Word document with all the instances of that code. So if you're doing analysis, you might read through um, you might read through this whole document. Um, you know, I've got, let's see, 27 pages of codes with difficult decisions. This is every example coded as a difficult decision. Um, and then maybe I'm just gonna come up 
you know, what, what did I learn about difficult decisions from across all these interviews? So that's the, the sort of most basic way to do it. Um, the next thing that you might be interested in doing, so again, just to reiterate, you double click on the code to pull up anything of that code, here's a different one, and then you can export it into a Word document or into an Excel document or a web browser, and that's gonna show you all the things there. Or you can just read through them in Max QDA. I, I personally like to, to export them. Um, and then the, the, a few other things that I wanted to show you um, is lexical searching can be really useful. Um, so say you wanna um, search for any time someone said like scary or scared um, in your interview. So you go into analysis and lexical search, and then you can just put, I have a, um, put words in here so I can go scared, scared, scary. I can put as many fear, afraid. I can put as many different things in, in here as I want. I could also do, um, oops, oh, so now I, I made the search. I, I accidentally pressed the button early, but you can see all the things in here where anybody said scary, scared, fear. Um, just like that last document, I can export it into a Word document. Um, and so you can automatically code things like say after the fact you realize, oh, a lot of people talked about telehealth. I wanna automatically code for that. So you code for anything that says telehealth, you can do that as well. Um, so you could add all these to a code if you wanted to. Let me show you one more thing about the lexical search. So you can do it in the documents and or in, or, or in memos. And then you can, um, say or or and. If I say and, then I'm going to have to find a passage with all these words in it. That's not going to probably come up about. But if there's one word that's mutually exclusive, but you want it to be in there, you can use and. Um, and then also find whole words. So let me show you an example of where that matters. Um, so say I do PPE, and I want to search for all the times that there's PPE, but I don't have find whole words um, selected. When I run that search, I'm gonna end up with all these things that have the letters PPE in them, but not what I'm looking for. Um, so let's run that again. And if I select find whole words or case sensitive um, would be another way to specify, then it's gonna eliminate instances where PPE happens to be in the middle of the word. And I'm only gonna get the PPE that I'm actually looking for here. Um, okay, so the next thing I wanna show you is another way of doing analysis called complex coding query. And this is a really useful way to just, once you've coded all your data, to take stock of what kinds of interesting intersections there are between codes, because there's some really fruitful analysis that could happen where your codes overlap. So let's go into um, analysis, and then we'll go to complex coding query. Um, <coughs> oh, sorry, <clears throat> I meant, um, uh, yeah, okay, complex code and query. So now I wanna know, um, say I'm interested in where, um, let's see, family and friends healthcare provider, I'll drag that into here, and, um, and HCP fear. So I wanna know where fear intersects with family, friends, and healthcare providers. So I'm gonna say start, uh, I can choose some different selections here, but I'm looking at, at where I've coded in, in between these two things. So I'm gonna press start. Um, it's activated all my documents here and it's pulling out my coded segments. And then I'm gonna end up down here with this. Um, everything that's down here is uh, 15 coded segments where those two things overlap. So again, I can export those um, into a Word document here. And then I will open that. I think it's gonna automatically open for me. Um, so you can see this is where those two codes overlapped. They both had um, healthcare provider, family and friends and healthcare provider fear. So maybe here I'm gonna learn about like fears that people had, the healthcare providers had about their family members. And so I've got three pages here, it's not a ton. Um, but you can look for the intersections of any two codes that way. Um, another interesting thing you can do that you might actually wanna do first is one of the visual tools called coding relations matrix. So this is where you go into visual tools and you pr click code matrix browse or co code relations browser. And then um, you can either do just the activated codes, which are the ones that are activated red, or you can select all codes and I'm gonna select all. So this is gonna show me the overlap between two different codes. And that could be really interesting because 
then it's going to show me when this showed up, this also came up a lot. And that's a really interesting thing to know. So um, I've, I've got those here and then I can do only when they're intersected in a particular segment. So when, when, when the codes actually overlapped or if they're proximal in the same document or if they just occur in the same document at all. For this research, the intersection of codes, I think for most people, this is gonna be the one you're gonna to wanna to select. But for some other research, you might be more interested in just any time that one person talks about two things and then you might do it if they're close to each other or if they occur in the same document. I'm gonna unselect that because I want it to select, do all the documents. Okay, so I'm gonna make this and it's gonna come up with a chart and you're gonna see, um, let me stick for you here. You're gonna see these squares. So every, the biggest squares are the ones where there was a lot of overlap. So here's a really interesting one. This is where the intersection between family friends and the family and friends of healthcare providers intersected with risk. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna say to myself, okay, what, what's that about? That, that's an interesting intersection. It means that fam, um, healthcare providers were often worried about we're talking about their family and friends, we're worried about the risks as healthcare for providers that they presented to their family and friends. That's, that's what I'm assuming. So then if I want to pull out those passages, I'm gonna go back to analysis, um, complex coding query, and then I'm gonna, I've got family and friends HCP here, I'm gonna drag in risk over here, and then I'm gonna run that, and, it's, and that's gonna pull for me all the segments where those two overlap. And it's gonna be a lot because, um, because I saw from that square that there's a lot in there. So that's a really quick way to sort of visually analyze your data and get a sense of what interesting intersections might, um, might be happening in the data there. So let's see what this comes up with. It's gonna pop down here. Um, and again, so there's 116 segments where people talked about risk in relationship to their family and friends. Um, and so again, I can export that, print it, export it as a Word document or as an Excel table. I'm gonna open it as a Word document. And um, it's gonna pop open for me here. And that reading through this, I'm probably gonna find out something really interesting. I could make, you know, that could be the, like the part of my analysis about this data. Um, so here's all the ones that overlap between those two codes. So there's some really interesting ways to analyze your coding. Um, the last thing I want to say is I barely scratched the surface of what Max QDA can do. This is just some very basic how to use it and analysis. And so I would suggest that if you go, if you ever need to know anything, if you go into the help and click Max QDA help, um, the web will open up. And if you search, they, there's really useful training videos. Um, so for example, like if I search um, complex coding query, let's put that in here complex coding query. Um, and then this is gonna come up and, oops, sorry. And then um, there's a whole thing here as well as, um, I think in this there might be, I remember seeing a video, a link to a video um, that explained for me how to do this. So there's lots of stuff you can search and it's super useful to um, use this, this, functionality, the search functionality here to learn new stuff. The other thing I would say is if you need support, um, if you go to online support center and you go to, um, to this should be kind of like a contact us, help with Max QDA, this is the functional support. Um, and if you go down to the bottom and fill out this form, um, they will respond to you usually within a day with any question that you have. So if you're like, I, this isn't working or what's going wrong here, I'm not sure how to do this, that the, the folks will respond to you there in Germany. So there's usually a delay, but I think that's a really useful way um, to get answers that, that you need if, if the help search doesn't help you out there. All right, so that's my basic Max QDA introduction. I hope uh, that was useful to you and have a good day.